FutureCast. Well, certainly a, a lot to cover. Uh, Pete and I have been analyzing uh, the satellite data a lot. We've noticed um, a kind of a structure change uh, in the storm, even though it's still maintaining its strength, how the storm is put together has changed a little bit. Let me show you the satellite photo right now. It's actually an infrared satellite photo, so obviously clouds are not uh, yellow and orange and red, but what the, what the sensor is doing is actually taking temperatures of the clouds and not getting too complicated. It actually shows us a wealth of information of how the storm is put together. So while its, its structure is changing, it's still uh, quite strong and the winds are up to uh, 100, 105 miles per hour. So as far as the weather headlines here, obviously still some growing concern for our area, for New England, just based on all the data that we've been looking at the last uh, couple of days. Rain, yes. Wind, yes. Significant ocean impacts, yes. It's just the magnitude of these impacts are still uncertain, though I'm leaning towards something that would border anywhere between moderate and major. So this is something obviously very significant. The time frame now, the original thinking was for something late, late Sunday night. Now the time frame appears to be Monday, Monday night, and perhaps into Tuesday as well. Obviously, we're going to get back to Sandy in just a second. First, quick look at things locally, and at least in the short term. Skies are clear in Providence. It's a nice evening now. Temperature at 57. The winds are light. Temperatures now uh, mid and upper 50s. 57 Providence and the Smithfield coming in at 61. Nothing organized as far as stormy weather. I had a few patchy clouds today, but the skies are essentially quiet and certainly heading out this evening. Uh, certainly no weather problems, clear to partly cloudy by midnight, the temperature dropping off to 52 degrees. So let's jump ahead to tomorrow morning. It looks fine. We'll start with the clouds and then uh, developing sunshine 11 a.m. at uh, 62 degrees. And then during the afternoon, it'll warm up nicely. Here we are city by city and town by town for your Friday afternoon. Mild and dry, mid and upper 60 sunshine, a few fair weather clouds looking good across the northern part of the state, the mid to upper 60, 65 Boroughville as well as Cumberland and nice across southeastern Mass with a light southerly breeze and comfortable in high temperatures, mid and upper 60s. All right, let's get to Sandy. Now moving through the Bahamas, here is Florida, category two storm, top winds of 105 gusting to over 120 miles per hour, moving to the north. So far doing everything we expected it to do, cross Jamaica, across Cuba, head into the Bahamas. Take a look at the uh, forecast track next three to five days as it parallels the East Coast off the Carolina coast. And then here we are by uh, Monday afternoon, Monday night into Tuesday. And we talked about this. If you've been watching the last several nights, how we were concerned about how it would make kind of a bend or a left hand turn. And that's pretty rare, uh, pretty rare for these storms to do. Usually in this position, they hightail it off to the right and out to sea. So to have it bend in like this is, uh, is, is not the norm. So this is certainly something unusual, though we feel fairly confident that this is the track that it will take. In fact, let me show you all the other computer models, the computer forecast tracks. Each colored line represents a track. And you can see there is definitely a cluster uh, in the mid-Atlantic states and south of New York City. So uh, the high likelihood of a landfall somewhere between Cape Cod and the mid-Atlantic states. But keep in mind, a hurricane is not a pinpoint on a map. Even though the, the center of the storm doesn't have to make landfall near you to get adverse weather. It could still track near New York City and we still get a high impact storm with rain, wind and some coastal flooding. If it in fact tracks in this location, uh, it's not good because what it represents is more of an onshore flow. So each high tide cycle uh, would bring uh, the risk of some significant coastal flooding. Whereas a track, uh, say further to the north, would be more of a land breeze and less of a coastal flood threat uh, for the uh, south shore. So the exact track will determine just what kind of impacts we have as far as coastal flooding. But bottom line, we are talking about a high impact storm system here. The timetable again appears to be Monday, Monday night into Tuesday. Seven day outlook uh, showing the uh, stormy weather arriving uh, now through at least. In fact, even Sunday day looks OK and early Sunday evening as far as any last minute preparations. And it's the Monday to Tuesday time frame that we're watching very closely. I uh, you know the other rare thing is, you know, traditionally when storms come through this area, they, they're in in the morning, they're out in the afternoon. They come by, they come through very quick. Right. This is very unusual because as it approaches, it slows down and that's not common for these parts. So a couple of abnormal situations with this storm as far as the track and how long it sticks around. So very unusual, but feel confident that it will happen. We don't want it to park over us. Unfortunately, hover. it will slow down. Yes, so kind of a slow parking. All right. Yeah. More coverage you can count on ahead on Eyewitness News Live at 5.